Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is a beautiful night to talk lacrosse. Yes, I know, right? Usually, we, you know, it, 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 this was, you know, um, this was not, you know, the first, you know, option for tonight, but this is the option that we have decided to go with here. We lost the subscriber in between the, you know, the last couple of days. I don't know where you went, but come on back real quick. You know, get us back to 183. Um, let's talk to PLL first. Um, the standings as it stands, as the games in Denver just finished up. In fact, like the games had to be moved up because of an impending storm. So, like, if you were up early this morning at like 11:30 Eastern, um, you you got to saw some good lacrosse, and then you also got to see some good good lacrosse on Friday night um, so you know Frisco was fun the games in Frisco were fun as hell the uh, the games in Denver were pretty fun as well I mean game of the year type deal out here with the Redwoods chaos last night honestly it was that good of a game uh, but as you see, a cluster, you know, has formed. Really, it's really the Whip Snakes, and then this group of teams in the second tier right now, and in the bottom tier, you know, really, at this point. So, well, well, let's talk about the Whip Snakes first. Whips are, you know, in a weird position where, you know, they, you know, first things first, five of the eight teams have playoff spots locked up. So really, it's about the bottom three. We'll talk about the bottom three in a moment, but the Whip Snakes they continue to win games very closely. Um, they only have an eight-point score differential right now, which you know if they lose these next two weeks, you know, because I mean there is a, there is the possibility that they lose the next two games and their score differential, you know, may not help them in the end. But if they win next week, they they get to sit easy. It doesn't matter what anybody else will do. They get to sit easy and take that first, you know, that first round by in the quarterfinals. Because remember, seven of the eight teams, the PLL, make the postseason. Uh, did this next tier, the Atlas, Chrome, Water Dogs, and Archers, really the team that stands out? Here's the Water Dogs. My Water Dogs, who have rebounded, have won five straight. They're five and three. They clinched the playoff spot, you know, again, thanks to last night's Redwoods Chaos game. And, you know, this this team with with Hannah, with Sowers, with Schlosser, I mean, I mean, this is a team that can make a run. Of course, you know, you got Chrome there as well, Chris Gray, Jeff T. They can make a run. Oh wait, I meant I'm a, my mistake, I meant Atlas and, and Chrome with Wisnowskis, you know, and don't don't discredit the archers either. They are still very, very dangerous. They have a 15-point score differential. They're four and four right now. So, you now the next two weeks are going to be real intriguing. And then this last tier here, the Redwoods of the Chaos. Again, they had a fantastic game last night. And then you got the Cannons here, who are at a negative 25 score differential, which is absolutely terrible. You don't want that. You do not want to have a negative 25 score differential you know it, it, it's it's pretty painful you know you know like the water dogs are able to fight off these injuries and you know somebody else you know needs to help the candidates it can't be just Lyle Thompson all the time and you see the ESP announcers just sucking off Lyle like it's nobody business you know like you know like sports analysts like to suck off KD and LeBron uh, it's it's not it's not good when you know the only player you talk about for the cannons is Lyle Thompson. Who don't get me wrong, he's one of the best players in the world. But uh, the cannons they've tried to get some help you know from other guys, but they just can't get everybody cohesive. Everything isn't cohesive. Guys are not defending well. Guys aren't defending the goal well, and it's just not working out. It's just not working out for them. You know, I think this team will miss the playoffs, you know, at this rate when we come back to you next Sunday, or rather two Sundays from now, you know, to talk the regular season finale and everything like that. Um, so, I mean, this this is just this is just insane, you know, you know, like the, the throwback for jerseys for 
you know, for a three-year-old league, you know, looked pretty good on the screens today. You know, the refs, they've been getting things wrong at times, but they've been getting some things right, and I think that's fine as well. Um, if you have noticed, uh, the sketch again, the schedule's changed uh, a couple times, you know, for the PLL again today. That was through no fault of their own. The games were all going to be on ESPN Plus anyway, you know, and they got moved up for the most part. And until, you know, the, light, the lightning delay in the Archers Whips game that took like two hours to get through, which I fell asleep through. Uh, I, I went to sleep for those two hours, you know. You know, the PLL's got it right for the most part. So, like, the next two weeks are going to be real intriguing to see how everything goes to see who's going to get those last two spots. Because remember, Whips, Archers, Atlas, Chrome, and Water Dogs have locked up playoff spots. Really, it's between the Redwoods, the Cannons, the Chaos, but the Cannons are way, way behind, you know, and I don't think this Cannons team is going to go anywhere. But there you have it. That's my thoughts on the PLL as it stands right now. In the NLL, let's talk the National Cross League as the Players Association in the league. They have a new CBA. The free agency was supposed to start like last week. But now it's going to start on the 15th, so that's going to be real good. You got several coaching changes like Mike Poland, who ended his career after a long, luxurious career. He's now Georgia's assistant GM. Saskatchewan has hired a couple new coaches. Philadelphia's got a new OC in Jeff McComb. But the big thing is a new commissioner. That's what the NLL has been searching for for a few months now as, you know, multiple you know, you had a commissioner who left, and you had an interim commissioner who left to go run the NWSL. And now Brett Frood, who is a former Brown player, he was he played it he played lacrosse at Brown. He he was a uh, guy who's been in NASCAR for a while. You know, with uh, Stuart Haas, you know Tony Stewart and whatever that. That is the guy that he, he's going to be running this league for the foreseeable future. He's going to be helping run in this league. And I think I think he's got a good idea of where he wants. As I've read, like a couple, I've read and watched a few interviews, it's going to be a little bit more conservative on expansion. I think the 15 teams we have now are nice. You know, I think we can get to a solid 16 before it's done. And, you know, I'd, I'd rather get the 16, you know, later. But, you know, 15's fine. And also, Fruit wants more TV slots. Remember, the NLL last year, for whatever reason, got kept getting stuck on ESPNU and ESPN News. Mostly ESPN News. There were a couple of ESPN2 slots. There were a couple of, you know, slots for the finals. As, you know, like the finals, they were all slated for ESPN Plus until, you know, like the day of, you know of the finals in which they got changed to ESPNU for the most part. I think games two and three were on ESPNU, but I know game one was on ESPN Plus, but I can't remember. Uh, but yeah, th those are two big things, and these are two big things that I want to, you know, again, I think expansion, you know, is good and all, but I think, you know, ex too much expansion, you know, for any league is bad. As you can see, the MLS, you know, having to sell their souls away to Apple, you know, for peanuts. You know, $250 million ain't really nothing in this copy anymore. So, yeah, the MLS in a good spot, you know, because, you know, last couple of years they've had some issues with, you know, the CBA and stuff like that. The PA, the Players Association and the League, you know, have had their differences to where, you know, like, the season has started later on a couple on at least one occasion or you know they didn't get the CBA done until November and you know things got messed up so things are good now things are good because it's August you got four months honestly till the season begins and I know the NLL schedule is going to be released I believe sometime next month I hope it's be hope it's during the time of the NLL, of the PLL championship which that would be great but in any case you know, it's a good spot. Athletes Unlimited. I have not watched a single Athletes Unlimited game, but there are definitely some good things coming out of it. 
uh, Sabah Puzo might be a four-time captain. You got Katie Glid, Dempsey Arsenal, Britt Reed, Kaylee Waters. They've been previous captains before. Charlotte North has been, you know, damn good to watch. Um, Taylor Moreno, Amanda Johansson, they've kept it up. They've been captains for a couple weeks now as well. And their game, you know, that was scheduled for Thursday night had to be moved due to, uh, due to like, rain and stuff. And then, you know, of course, you know, two of the biggest names in women's lacrosse, you know, over the past decade, Kayla Traer and Taylor Cummings, they have left the game. They've retired. Uh, Athletes Unlimited, you know, I've watched a couple highlights here and there, but for the most part, have not seen a full game, and I do not intend to at this time. Uh, you know, the rules are still a little confusing for me. Again, it's like it's like learning like 17 different types of the same game. You know, that's what lacrosse is. It's already hard enough with the bed side of things. You think you think I want to learn the point system at Athletes Unlimited? But these girls can these girls can play, and we know this. You know, you know these women can ball. You know, again, I've seen highlights and stuff like that. They can, they can, they can fling that thing. In the meantime, World Lacrosse, you know, the overall governing body of you know, Lax has the under twenty one men's championship beginning in Ireland on what August the tenth. Twenty three countries slash teams are going to be competing in Ireland for the chance to win the under twenty one championship with the gold medal game on August the 20th and that's going to be like real early in the afternoon I may or may not watch the gold medal game I'm not going to watch any others but if the gold medal game is going to be interesting I'll watch that uh, you know there's that that's going to be really intriguing to see um, again I'm not usually you know like you know about these tournaments and stuff like that involving different countries that's more of a you know, when you usually think about tournaments involving countries, you think of soccer, and you know, I just, I just can't, I just can't do it for lacrosse. There are a lot of guys, and again, they changed it from under 19 to under 21. So there's going to be a lot of guys that are in college right now that we could be seeing on the field in 2023. In fact, I haven't even looked at any rosters for 2023 yet, but uh, I'll look at those another day. You know, like in like December or January. You know, when we get really back into lacrosse and everything like that so this is going to be real fun you you got a lot of teams you know buying for that U21 men's title in Ireland and in the Professional Box Lacrosse Association the new box league that is not competing with the NLL I don't know where people have been getting that from I think they're trying to supplement the NLL but the PBLA they are having a name the team contest, so August 15th, that's when the names will be announced. Some of these names are goofy as hell. Some of these names are kind of, you know, kind of try to copy PLL. Some of these names, you know, with the whole lacrosse club thing. And some of these names are just kind of, why? What, what, what was the purpose of designing this name if that's the name you came up with? Um, a couple things I did find out, you know, I, I kind of figured... That's something was weird about the whole Manchester Springfield thing, but it's been confirmed that they're going to share an arena. So, you know, the team that's supposed to be in Manchester, New Hampshire, and Springfield, Massachusetts, they're going to share an arena. I don't know how that's going to work. Uh, there was also the interview with the commissioner, whose name I forgot off the top of my head. You know, 14 game schedule, single elimination playoffs, streaming, you know, coming soon, he said. Um,. In an interview with Inside Lacrosse, or was it of uh, Lax All Stars? I can't remember which outlet did that interview, but um, this is really interesting for the PBLA. Again, you know, this is another league that could have a lot of potential because there are a lot of guys that are young coming out of college or coming out of high school that know the game of lacrosse, want to be paid for for playing the game of lacrosse. And can you know put the results out on the field with their spectacular play, and I think you know the PBLA is you know a, definitely something different, and I think it could be done. I mean, I don't know if it's gonna you know try again. I don't know if it's gonna try and compete with the NLL or anything because their season starts in December as well. But I think this league 
in order to be successful with the smaller arenas and everything, they're going to have to pack the houses. They're going to have to pack the houses. They're going to have to, you know, do everything. They're going to have to market a little bit better because, I mean, when you look at the site, it's kind of iffy right now. It's kind of bad looking. And, like, the only real attraction at the moment is the weird team names. That's the that's the really the only reason why anybody's engaging with it. I've, I've followed a little on Twitter, I think, and I, I, I'm just unsure right now as to what I feel about this league. Unlike, you know, Athletes Unlimited, where I don't think I'll be watching anytime soon until, you know, we get actual teams instead of, you know, you know, I'm, I, I, I've always been about teams. I'm not about, you know, team, first name, last name. I'm not about, I'm not about you know, the players, you know, uh, like that. Uh, like, don't get me wrong. I love the players. Uh, I'm just not about that. You know the weird point system and everything. So you know the PBLA. I don't know how their rules are going to work or anything like that either. Um, you know it, it, it's it, it's it's going to be interesting. We'll see what they do. We'll see what they do when, they, when we talk about them again. So by the time you know next Sunday, it'll be like uh, not next Sunday, two Sundays from now. You know around like seven thirty, eight o'clock, we'll have everything set. Athletes Unlimited will have ended their season. The PLL will have ended their regular season. NLL might have some more news. The PBLA is going to have something, and we'll see who in the world is going to win the under-21 men's championships, which, again, I don't know if I want to see or not. I'm, I'm debating. It depends on how my schedule, you know, works out um, that Saturday, because if, if it does work out for that Saturday, I'm, I'm going in. I'm doing it. I'm watching it. If it doesn't, I ain't watching it, and I'll just wait to the PLL. Uh, but I'm intrigued. I don't know if I'm gonna watch it or not. And you know, it's gonna be real. It's gonna be real, a real interesting next two weeks. I'll say that much. So you got lacrosse every day from what August 10th to August 21st. So let's get it. Let's get it. Get your ESPN pluses. Get your lax sports networks out. You know, get your tablets out, and you know your phones, your computers, whatever you need to digest 12 straight days of lacrosse. And until then, until next Saturday night, when we wrap up this week in indoor football season number two, my name is Big Boy Sports. I'm signing out, and I'll see you all next weekend. Unless the NBA releases their schedule this week. <laughs> I just want to get that out of the way, too. Uh, if there is the NBA schedule release, uh, we'll be talking about that this week. So, really until probably Saturday, see you soon, everybody.